Today, one in every three Americans has metabolic syndrome. What is metabolic syndrome? I'm here today to talk about how to put the kibosh on metabolic syndrome. I'm Miriam Hinein. I'm an investigative journalist, a functional medicine consultant, best known for directing the film Vanishing of the Bees. I'm also the founder of Honey Colony, an online magazine and marketplace aimed at empowering you to be your own best health advocate. Today, one in every three Americans has metabolic syndrome. What is metabolic syndrome? Well, it's a cluster of conditions that occur together and it increases your rate of heart disease, stroke, type 2 diabetes. And these conditions then include increased blood pressure, uh, high blood sugar, excess body fat, um, and abnormal cholesterol and triglyceride levels. So there are three characteristics that lend to metabolic syndrome that I'm going to go over. Uh, today there is no shortage of obesity in America. One in every two people today has a chronic illness and we are arguably living in a world where Western medicine is better known as sick care. And that's why there's so much censorship going on today because the truth is out of the bag and people can heal and you do not want to have metabolic syndrome. So there's three big issues that lead to virtually all diseases. One of them is inflammation. Inflammation is the heart of all disease. So when your body is sick or injured, it's normal to have an inflammatory response. However, if it becomes chronic, then you're unable to really heal you're in a chronic state of inflammation, which is very, very prevalent today. And arguably, people have inflammation in their brains and all over. And it does start with the gut. The gut is connected to the brain. So inflammation is good for a certain period of time. It helps you heal. But unfortunately, many, many of us are dealing with chronic inflammation. Another characteristic of metabolic syndrome is oxidative stress, something again that is very prevalent because we are bombarded with toxins. Like consider that there's 84,000 chemicals that um, the EPA has not regulated and we have no idea how it's interacting, how they interact with one another. If we look to the bees as an example, we can see that when a systemic pesticide comes into contact with an herbicide or a fungicide, it becomes a thousand times more toxic. So we are arguably dealing with chemical body burden where there's, you know, your skin is your largest organ. If you're using crap shampoos, if you're using crappy uh, skincare products, the quality of the water, the air, uh, you know, the air inside our homes is more polluted than the air outside. And then there's also the food supply, which has become arguably a weaponized tool. And then there's the soil that has unfortunately been degraded because of all the crap that we put into the soil, because of the fact that we don't do crop rotation and that big ag and just farming supports monocultures. And that has an impact. Soil is very important. That means that we are not imbibing, digesting the minerals that we need in order uh, to properly function and one nutrient, you can be deficient in one nutrient and that can create a cascade of issues because you need that nutrient as a cofactor for let's say the synthesis of 
tryptophan uh, to melatonin, for instance. So oxidative stress is very, very common when your body is run by free radicals, your cells basically suffer oxidative stress. And free radicals is just a part of life. It comes from normal metabolic processes. It comes from breaking down food. Um, but then if you are exposed, let's say you drink on a regular basis, which I don't um, drink any alcohol, but if you are exposed to any toxins, for instance, these can accumulate. And so it's important to have and take in antioxidants. So cells, protein, and DNA are all damaged by oxidative stress. And this contributes to premature aging and diseases like metabolic syndrome and basically debilitating neurological conditions as well. The third factor in causing metabolic syndrome is insulin resistance. Now, again, there's no shortage of people who are insulin resistant. Why? Because the food supply and arguably you are eating too many carbs and too much sugar, and then it's prompting your insulin levels to go off the charts. Um, I have very low insulin I know because I regularly take tests and I'm a big proponent of taking tests and I follow a ketogenic diet. So just to take a little detour into talking about uh, keto ketosis and ketogenic diets. Now, from a functional, mo point of, functional medicine point of view, we look at you as an individual. So if you were to come to me as a client, I would create a timeline, I would give you a very, very thorough intake form, and I would look at things including antecedents, things that occurred before you were even born, um, things that had to do with your parents, looking to see also if you were vaginally born, if you grew up taking antibiotics, if you were given vaccines, and considering all of that, in your timeline to really get to the root and address what is going on. Now, someone might say, I need carbs. And there are some humans, typically I find in my practice that a lot of A's and B types can handle more carbs. Every person is different. I can look at carbs and gain weight. I don't need carbs. If you are following a ketogenic diet and just to explain what that is instead of running on glucose sugar carbs turn into sugar sugar turns into sugar and too much protein turns into sugar then that's the source the fuel that you are using now in the hunter and gatherer days you didn't have the privilege of having even breakfast i mean breakfast is a, is a concept that was introduced you would be hunting and gathering and you would subsist on fats and you might go a few days without eating and intermittent fasting and fasting is good for the body so then in that case you are running on ketones rather than glucose so I give the example of like basically driving a SUV versus driving a Prius one, in my opinion, is a superior kind of fuel. Now, I know a fruitarian who eats 30 bananas a day, and that works for him. So he's constantly having to eat. I think that for me personally, that would be a diet that I would maybe consider eating more fruits if I lived in the jungle, if I lived in a hot climate. Um, when you do follow a ketogenic diet, your insulin levels will go down. And it's, for instance, a prescription, a recommendation for people who want to reverse diabetes. And you will see that you don't really need that much food. Um, I can go a long time without eating and don't have the same hunger pans, pangs as I did when I was a normie or when I was eating um, 
other types of foods. Now, I'm 46 and proud to announce that I'm 46. I have guns now that I definitely did not have. I will show a before and after photo. So I look better today at 46 than I did at 26. And in fact, not to say it arrogantly, but I look better than some 20 year olds because I'm in better health. So insulin resistance is usually prompted by eating a lot of carbs, um, a diet, poor diet, poor sleep habits can create insulin resistance, not exercising, and all of this, these three factors, insulin resistance and inflammation and oxidative stress cause, cause um, your metabolism uh, to, to break down, to go haywire, so you're not running properly, and uh, you can. So one of the things that we're looking at today is Hydra. I'm reaching for my Hydra, which is the name of the product. Um, it's, a, it's, it's molecular hydrogen. Molecular hydrogen is the smallest antioxidant. This is Hydra. And um, you can use the coupon code 10 off T-E-N-O-F-F. To get 10% off if you want to try molecular hydrogen. So hydrogen has the potential to basically moderate the risks associated with metabolic syndrome. And over and over again I'm asked how to heal and it's like I'm not a salesperson. The best and easiest thing that you can do is alter your diet. And first and foremost, because every person is an individual, what you can do is eat clean. So I'm not here to shame you if you're a vegan, if you're a meat eater. Um, just consider that there's a hella, hella poisons and meat is injected. Not only are these animals not treated properly conventionally um, and, and are, have a lot of stress, but they're injected with hormones to fatten them up and antibiotics, which was never meant to be a preventative. That's R. I can't say the R word, so I'm just going to say that's R, to give antibiotics in a preventative way. And um, so the first and most important thing is to eat clean. And usually when I work with people, I make small little adjustments and do upgrades. So back to molecular hydrogen. It promotes healthy inflammatory response as it's been shown to actually downregulate the production of tidy, tiny proteins called cytokines that tell our bodies to make excess inflammation and arguably people have high cytokines this day, this day and age. So there's been many, many sci studies on molecular hydrogen and it's shown the ability to basically improve glucose metabolism. So it's, it's just, it's a tab. Before we used to have to put, oh, we used to, used to have to close the bottle and use plastic and seal it and wait. And now you can just put it in water and let it dissolve for 15 minutes. I'm talking about molecular hydrogen. I'm talking about metabolic syndrome. And metabolic syndrome includes three factors, insulin resistance, inflammation, and oxidative stress. So as I was saying, hydrogen has the potential to moderate risks associated with, with metabolic syndrome, allows you to better metabolize glucose sugar. So in just 12 years of research, there's been over 1,200 scientific articles, I don't know if you can find them on Google anymore, uh, published describing the health benefits of various methods of taking in hydrogen consumption, of uh, taking in hydrogen. Typically, after letting it dissolve, I will chug it. I will chug it um, before going to work out or after going to work out, and we have a lot of 
customers that tell us that it's helped them with inflammation, that it's actually helped them with mood, it's helped them with sleep. And we have all these articles on Honey Colony. I will put a link. I will put a link, yo. And um, there are 65 human trials testing hydrogen as a therapeutic agent and basically using hydrogen when it's infused in water. So it's called Hydra. Our product is called Hydra after the Greek goddess Hydra. And this is a super, this one pill is a super high concentration of hydrogen water. So you just kind of drop it in and wait 10 to 15 minutes and then drink it. Um, and we are also I'll put another article chronically uh, dehydrated in this country. I had the privilege of, of interviewing Aaron Brockovich and did a pretty comprehensive story on how crap and poisonous the water in this country is. Uh, do not drink the tap water. Please do not drink the tap water. So we were, we, I, were discussing metabolic syndrome. If you find these videos useful, informative, please, please subscribe, subscribe here. Um, and um, join, yeah, join our newsletter. I'll put the sign up for that as well and check out Honey Colony because you might never ever have known that we exist if you are using Google as your search engine and YouTube is owned by Google. Check out Hydra if you are dealing with oxidative stress, insulin resistance, or inflammation. You can also reach out to me at Mariam, M-A-R-Y-A-M, at honeycolony.com to book a consult where I take a deep dive and I'm very uh, thorough and use my investigative skills to kind of get to the root of why you're not feeling well. Please believe that you can regain your health, that you can improve. I have reversed lupus and fibromyalgia. I was literally was hit by a Ford Explorer and literally dragged across the cement 50 feet, broke many, many bones, had to learn how to walk again. And um, if I can do it, you can do it. Of course, every person is different and I don't know your ailment or issue, but I do believe that nutrition, food is thy medicine, can help you improve. Thank you. Over. And out.